The girls from Greenwich are here. They just gave us a, one of the delights from the San Moritz Bakery up there. Boy, it really is sweet. To die. Just beautiful. Right? Oh, mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about this big um, rating the records uh, controversy that's erupted over the last uh, couple of weeks. Actually, it's been simmering now for months, but it came to a head in Washington. Frank Zappa was one of the people who testified before the Senate committee there. So you all know Frank. He's had a, a long career in uh, music. And we're joined uh, by Rick Rizza. Rizzy. Rizzy, I'm sorry, Rick, who is the father of an 11-year-old daughter. He's a former adult bookstore operator. He's a rock musician, born-again Christian, not an official spokesperson for the Parents Music Resource Center, but is a PMRC supporter. Nice to have you both on the show. Good morning. Now, I suppose we should... Um, preface this by showing you what we're talking about. Here is a video of Madonna in action, a sort of suggestive, and we'll see what you think of it no more. <laughs> Married Sean Penn and lived happily ever after. <laughs> He gave her a few ice cubes and What we're talking off. about here are some studies that show that more and more rock videos are loaded with the scenes depicting drug use, casual sex, and that an entire generation of kids could grow up thinking that violence, sadism, degrading sex, and, um, and drugs are okay. So, that's what we're talking about. Really, Frank, it's nice to have you here, and why don't you uh, tell us kind of what you told the uh, people down in Washington? Well, first, I'm going to tell you what I told the guy out there in the hall, that this thing began as a discussion about lyrics, and mm -hmm. what the PMRC has done to uh, exacerbate the matter is put the business of videos, I mean, the television shows that cover this thing always show a bunch of video clips, you know, look at this, but originally they're talking about words, and that's, that's right. really what it's Which about. Which are probably even more important. Yeah, well, it's... You know, it would be better if we're going to limit the discussion to the actual words to the song, because that's what got the stuff started. Well, that's what the that PMRC thing. wants, is a rating system on with the lyrics, lyrics available right. to parents, right? Yes. That's right. And so what I suggested during the hearing, and because uh, there's been a certain amount of news management that has occurred since the actual hearing, you, know, you probably haven't heard that I made the suggestion that the lyrics be printed on the back of the uh, album. I did hear that, Frank, and I think that's a good idea. The, but let's understand what it will take in order to put those lyrics on the back of the albums. So when the PMRC started uh, complaining about this, they were predated by the PTA who actually asked for lyrics last year. Mm -hmm. And they went to the record companies and said, well, you put the lyrics on. The record companies uh, said no. And there was a good reason. They don't own the lyrics. Publishers and songwriters own the lyrics. Copyright. That's right. So I think that if they were to um, pay the publishers and the copyright owners to put the lyrics on there, there would be no problem. But you can't expect a third party to give up their rights to uh, the exploitation of their lyrics, or which is one of the ways in which they earn their living, because a few people want to have this particular kind of security. Because let's face it, if you don't like this kind of music, there is the children's section in the record store with the Smurf record and Lassie and hey, shop uh, there. In other words, you don't have to buy it if you don't, you don't. like it. And Excuse me. Yeah. I, I have to interrupt you here, but oh, okay, uh, go ahead. only because I feel that we're, we're getting away from the issue a little bit. The issue, really, the the issue began as uh, looking at a situation where uh, we're dealing with kids that are 9, 10, 11, 12 years old, and we're all aware of that. And the real question is, uh, are the lyrics that they're listening to day in and day out, do these lyrics influence them or uh, condition them to any degree uh, in regards to accepting certain things as, as a way of life? And uh, the answer to this, I, I think anybody who's got eyes and ears, you know, would have to agree that it does to some degree condition them. Uh, human beings are all conditioned by their environment. They're all conditioned by what they hear and what they're taught. And I know Frank agrees with me on that. I don't. First of all, <laughs> I'll okay, tell you well, why. I'll tell you why I said that as soon as I'll give you your okay, chance well, to say that. Go ahead. For instance, if you're talking about uh, eight and nine-year-old children, and one of the things that the ladies have been complaining about is songs that talk about oral sex at gunpoint. I've seen them on television. This song is, a, you know, first of all, it's not proven that the song that they're talking about was about oral sex at gunpoint, but they think so. If you have an eight or nine year old child and you, you, you have the child hear a song, suppose it was about oral sex at gunpoint, do they know what that means? Unless they live in a house where the parents are always talking about oral sex at gunpoint, okay. do they know uh, what it, it might means? make them curious let, to let find out, right? Yeah, well, then, no, then well, it's the parents' I job to tell them. I disagree with you. These kids, uh, you know, they're around other kids, okay? Some older, some other younger. Eight or nine year olds. And they're all exposed to this. And I, I would strongly suggest that you listen to the lyrics to the song yourselves. Because as intelligent human beings, there is no way you're going to listen to that song and tell me that that's not what they're talking about. 
All right. Uh, you accused, I, I had heard you on WXRK uh, referring to us as ostriches with our heads in the sand. Never said that. Oh, yes, But you it did. sounds good. I was, listening to, I was listening to the interview. You had said if, if it were up to us, the national bird would be an ostrich. Oh, yeah, that's... And my reference to your, uh, my reference to the fact that you agree with the theory of conditioning was, in fact, you had said something to the effect, and I can't quote you because they would throw me off the set if I did, mm -hmm. okay? But you had said something to the effect that uh, uh, you were defending the need for pornography and had said that, uh, that some men need this because they suffer from an inability to function in a sexual uh, situation. Now, I'm not quoting you again, I'll be but happy that was to the give gist you the exact of it. quote if you'd like to hear it. And, well, it's, sorry, take it easy. If you, if you would like to do that on the air, that's up to you. Well, I've done it on the air and I haven't what offended I'm, anybody. If you want to talk about logic, is, here's, here's it's a, the, it is a violation of FCC regulations. What is okay? The, the language that you used in that interview. Well, let's not talk about Frank's language. Okay. Let's talk about well, the language exactly. that we're all talking well, about. What, I'm, what I'm getting at, what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is You all know how Frank is, okay. you know. The point yeah, you I'm trying to... <laughs> the point I'm trying to... The point I'm trying to make yes, is that right. there is a contradiction here. Leave me alone. You're going to get it. I'm just saying there is a contradiction here, okay? There's no contradiction. Yeah, uh, you had Look, said that I American men suffer from an inability to function because of the preaching of the church that sex is bad. Now, this to me says that what you're talking about is a form of conditioning. That they've been conditioned to the point where they can't function in a sexual situation because of their teaching. Now, what I'm saying is that 8 and 9 and 10, 11 and 12 year old kids are a lot more susceptible to that kind of uh, that kind of teaching, and that's exactly what they get from and from these records and from these groups that they look up to and they emulate and they idolize. And there's no getting around it. And not you or anybody else is going to tell me it's not so. We got to pause. We'll come right back in just a moment. So we're talking about the controversy around rating the records with Frank Zappa and Rick Rizzi. So, okay, supposing the record industry decides to voluntarily uh, go along with this and give their records an R, a PG, a G, just like the movies right. do. Uh, do you think that's really going to help? Uh, yeah, I do, uh, in a sense, because when you're talking about, in most cases, kids are, adolescent kids, you know, a lot of these kids are school kids. They don't have jobs. All right, usually when they, they go to buy a record, 90% uh, of the time they're getting the money from allowances and from, uh, it gives parents uh, an opportunity to at least, you know, to say to them, well, look, this isn't suitable for you, you know, and uh, I would rather that you didn't bring this into the house. I'd rather you not be exposed. Any to objections it. It's just to giving that, the Frank? parent an alternative. Yeah, I have big objections to that. If you print the lyrics on the back, you as a parent get to determine whether or not it's an R or, or how you feel about it. If you set up a rating system, that means either a record company executive whose um, standards might be a little bit different than yours uh, because he's in uh, Hollywood or New York and you might live in Biloxi, Mississippi and his idea of what's hardcore mm -hmm. might be different than yours. Uh, if somebody else, uh, an executive or a committee, makes the decision as to what to label a record, they are taking a right away from you. And it's also a type of censorship, the sneakiest, littlest, tiniest little beginning of a censorship that goes that way all the way across the state. I you see the movies have done it for years, and what yeah. has happened is nobody's making G-rated movies. They're all going for that R. Well, they are. Or, all right. 